بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I am your brother Sajid Umar and welcome to mybetterhalf.com From the outset I'd like to express a heartfelt gratitude to the mybetterhalf.com team for affording me this opportunity to speak to you all My dear brothers and sisters in Islam One thing that's clear is the life that we live is a dynamic life. It's not a static life. It's a life that has ups and it is a life that has downs. We have high moments and we have low moments in every aspect of our lives. And this is not strange because we in the dunya and the place of everlasting highs and everlasting happiness is a place called Jannah. And the place of everlasting doom an everlasting gloom is a place known as jahannam we in the dunya a place known as the temporary before the perpetual and a place well known for its dynamic nature these ups and these downs we will never ever uh, be upon constant lows nor will we always always be upon uh, constant highs and this is the same with our marriages and us as wives and us as husbands there will always come a point in a marriage no matter how happy that marriage is where there will be a moment or two if not more those moments that we will consider low moments those moments that will uh, you know spoil our days those moments that we really wouldn't even want our enemies to uh, ever uh, experience this is the nature uh, of this life and because this is how life is marriages will experience Uh, those moments as well but the reality is as well my dear brothers and sisters uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never left us unattended Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed books and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent prophets to teach us how to navigate the different moments life throws at us in a successful manner and even in marriage we see from the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam great lessons great teachings great narrations Uh, narrations that help us navigate the difficult moments that you and I may experience uh, in our marriages. Now, uh, I have been honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to serve in the realm of arbitration and um, looking over um, situations that couples go through, uh, difficult situations uh, that couples go through. And through my time looking over these situations, I've come to understand a formula. Uh, a formula that I consider a formula for success irrespective of the circumstance that our marriage is going through. And I call that formula the R, the letter R, the R of rights versus the R of responsibility. The R of rights versus the R of responsibility. And the reality is, my dear brothers and sisters, uh, it's that we always have rights. We all have rights. Uh, but the life that we live in demands responsibility. And in many of the situations I've arbitrated through, if not all of them, I've come to realize that all of those circumstances could have been solved if one party or both parties chose to be responsible in the difficulty that they were experiencing over their ability to exercise their rights. And I'll share you uh, a few examples of this. Firstly, let's start from the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If we look at Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he married Khadija radiallahu anha, there's differing reports as to how old she was, um, whether she was uh, 40 uh, or whether she was 28. Um, But nonetheless, when he married her sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, she had a child, a child that was called Hind. Now this child wasn't the child of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when we look at the books of Seerah, we see that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was so kind with Hind and he was with this child the way a father, a real father would be with this child. Even though it was his right to exercise himself in a certain way with this child, but he chose to be more responsible and treat this child as if this child was his own. This is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did, right? And when we look at, you know, 
uh, or from the angle of Khadija radiallahu anha, and, we, and, we, and when we look at her side, we see that you know she welcomed Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam into her home. She didn't say it's your right to provide a home, and I don't have to provide a home. She was responsible, radiallahu anha. She exercised her right to be responsible over her ability to exercise her rights. And she welcomed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam into her home and allowed him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to feel that her home was his home. So she exercised the hour of responsibility over her, over her ability to exercise her rights. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did the same. And this is how their marriage was. And this was the foundation that they built their marriage upon. The foundation of responsibility over the responsibility of being right and exercising rights. Now, later on, when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam chose to bring Ali radiallahu an into the home, into their marriage, because he wanted to uh, ease or alleviate the difficulty that Abu Talib was facing because he was not rich and he had many children. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wanted to reciprocate the good that Abu Talib uh, extended to him when Abu Talib uh, looked after him. So he took one of his children and that child was Ali radiallahu an and brought this child into the marriage. We see Khadija radiallahu anha happily accepting the gesture of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the choice of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the decision of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Why? Because their marriage was upon this important platform of responsibility. He was a father to her child. And when we look at her abilities with Ali radiallahu anhu, we see that she adopted herself or conducted herself as a mother as well. Subhanallah to Ali and she didn't say it's my right to behave in a certain way and this is the only way I will behave. No, she crossed the sphere of rights and entered the sphere of responsibility and looked after Ali as her own child just as her husband did to her child, just as her husband did to him. So this is the message my dear brothers and sisters, the all important message of remembering the hour of responsibility especially when our marriage hits turbulence, especially when we have to fasten our seatbelts because the marriage is shaky, because we traversing through difficult moments or that difficult weather um, uh, as an aircraft does when an aircraft enters uh, turbulence, right? We must remember that the way out of turbulence is in being responsible. We don't have to have it my way or the highway. And, and the worst scenario is when both parties want to have it as my way or the highway. She wants this, he wants that, and she wants it because she can. And he wants it because he can. By Allah, if you choose to traverse through turbulence in this way, you will rarely reach a solution. You will rarely find peace in that marriage. You will rarely find that marriage lasting the test of time. Remember, brothers and sisters, marriage is not for life. Marriage is for a lifetime. Marriage is for a lifetime. And for marriage to last the test of time, honorable values have to be part and parcel of our marriage. And one of the most honorable values of any marriage is the value of responsibility. When a husband comes home from a tiring day and you as a wife might have had a tiring day yourself looking after the home, the children, the children might have been more difficult that day. It happens, right? Sometimes our children, subhanAllah, we don't know what happened. They woke up on one side of the bed and subhanAllah, they are, uh, you know, they, 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 they behave in a way that requires us to toil for the entire day and we tired as well. And yes, you have a right to rest perhaps, right? But sometimes you say, you know what? My husband's been having a difficult week. Let me be responsible and put in the extra yardage, put in the extra effort and still ensure that the meal is prepared, right? Doing that, subhanAllah, goes a long way. And do it for the sake of Allah. You don't have to tell him now when he comes home and he has that meal that, you know, I had a hard day just like you had a hard day, but this is what I did. It might be your right to say that, but you can be responsible and not say that because you did it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is Allah who controls the hearts. Allah will, will add extra love to his heart, love for you, oh dear wife. And in the same breath, a husband can come home from a day at work and find that perhaps the meal wasn't prepared to his liking. Perhaps there's an ingredient or two missing. 
And yes, it might be your right to express to your wife that the meal is not up to the standards or not up to par, but it's your responsibility to remain silent. Why? Because you know that she didn't intend to feed you a meal which was not up to your standards. Rather, she toiled with love, right? Uh, and, and was looking forward to putting this dish in front of you so that you may eat and she, 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 uh, she would see the comfort on your face because of the meal. This is the reality uh, of the minutes and hours that she spent preparing that meal. So it becomes your responsibility to remain silent. Yes, it's your right to speak, but it's more responsible to keep quiet about it because she didn't intend harm. And at the end of the day, she's a human being. She has feelings and she never intended harm. She only intended your happiness. And you know what? Nine times out of 10, if not 10 times out of 10, she will sit down with you and have that meal and realize, you know what? There's less salt in the food. Or, you know what? This is missing or this ingredient is missing. And she will tell you herself that, SubhanAllah, I'm so sorry. You know, I had so, such high aspirations for this meal and I fed it to you and I've just realized there's less salt. And you know what? When she says that, you can even be more responsible and say, really? SubhanAllah, I didn't notice. SubhanAllah. You know, this is, this is how it is. You know, marriage, is, is, is going to be difficult. SubhanAllah, you live together every day, every week, every month for the rest of your life, right? Um, if there's anyone you need to be more, more merciful to is being more merciful to your spouse. A husband being merciful to his wife and a wife being merciful to her husband. And mercy, my dear brothers and sisters, starts with that R, that R of responsibility. I was just discussing with the mybetterhalf.com team the ayah in surah rum allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa min ayatihi an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwajan litaskunu ilayha wa ja'ala baynakum mawaddatan wa rahma mawaddatan wa rahma allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and from the signs of allah that allah exists that allah is one in his lordship and in his worship there's no one worthy of worship besides him from those signs is the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made us in pairs and made us as couples. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed our spouses, those spouses that we may take peace from. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes marriage as uh, this formulation of a man having the ability to, to derive peace in the rugged life that this man lives. Subhana Rabbi al-A'la. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that from his signs, from his signs is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this institution of marriage or this institution known as marriage. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that from his signs as well is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed between you, O husband, and you, O wife, two elements. The first element is mawadda, love. And the second element is rahma, mercy. Subhanallah, subhanallah, nothing in the Quran is extra. The fact that Allah has taught us that he has placed these two elements among many of the elements that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed is a sign of how important these two elements are, love and mercy. If you want a marriage built upon responsibility, look after the element of love and look after the element of mercy. When, you know, when the marriage is new and there's a lot of love between uh, the couple, you know, that honeymoon period, quote and quote, as we call it. And, and sometimes I joke with the youth. I say that period when we're all running to the moon to put honey on the moon, right? So when, the, when we're living through that particular period, there's a lot of love. And when that love is there, we're always willing to overlook each other's faults, right? You could have food without salt for a week. It won't bother you, right? And your husband can be missing work for a week. For some reason, you'll overlook it. You won't say, SubhanAllah, you're spending too much time at home. I think you need to go out now. You're noticing too many things in the home. Sometimes it happens. You know, when, when the husband's at home for too long, he starts noticing certain things. You know, the, the dust under the couch there, or, you know, that window hasn't been wiped clean. There's a fingerprint there. And then what happens? The wife says, you know what? The problem is you're sitting at home too long. You need to go out because you're sitting at home too long. Your focus is becoming more acute and you're concentrating on things you shouldn't have. These things happen in marriage. But nonetheless, you know, at the beginning, of marriage when the love is in, in, in large amounts, we won't ever even wish that our husband left the home. And the husband won't ever, you know, take a wife to task uh, for the few mistakes that, you know, she might do, right? Because there's love. 
So we're willing to look after the hour of responsibility then. Why? Because love is in high dosages. But then as the marriage uh, you know, treads its path, three years go by, six years go by, nine years go by, subhanAllah, and quote unquote, we say now the love is settling or we don't know if the love levels are decreasing, right? And that is the reason why now we, you, we choose to exercise our rights. We're losing patience. I've heard many wives say this. I've heard many husbands say this. We're losing patience with our wife. We say, oh, I'm losing patience with my husband. So I say, so what's different? You know, what's different? How come before you, you had patience and now you don't have patience? You know, perhaps the reason is the love is going down. And just as a footnote, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, I always tell my younger uh, brothers and sisters not to fall in love. Don't fall in love. You know why? Because falling was never good for you anyway. I mean, who falls down and doesn't get hurt? Right? If, you get, if you fall down, you're going to bleed. And that's why this concept of falling in love is a problem. Islam tells us not to fall in love. Islam tells us to grow in love. We should grow in love with each other. And that's why when someone says, oh, I want to marry this girl, I've fallen in love with her, I say, you better be careful. Perhaps you need to rethink your situation and maybe look for another girl because you've fallen and people who fall get hurt. And this is just on a light note, uh, my dear brothers and sisters. But the point to note is that let's say the love in the marriage has reduced slightly. Let's say we're losing patience. Let's say we no longer uh, you know, find it easy to exercise responsibility. And we want to exercise rights. We want to hold our husband to task. We want to hold our wife to task. Then it is here, my dear brothers and sisters, that I remind you about the second element that Allah placed in marriage. And that is the element of mercy. That okay, the love is not there anymore but still be responsible by being merciful to one another. Exercise your right to be mercy. Allah has placed within us an ability to be mercy. Even though you don't want to be responsible, be merciful and choose to be responsible. You know why? You know why, my dear brothers and sisters? Because marriage is from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it's worth fighting for. It's worth fighting for. So this is the message, my dear brothers and sisters. The R of responsibility versus the R of rights. My dear brothers and sisters, the team here at mybetterhalf.com, um, they uh, have prided themselves in looking after the sign from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, looking after the institution of marriage, and they have a website and, the, um, and an email address for you all to um, write to in the event that you're feeling, you know, like you can't exercise responsibility anymore. If you feel like you can't re exercise responsibility anymore, write to them. And the email address is express at mybetterhalf.com. E-X-P-R-E-S-S at mybetterhalf.com. Write to them and inshallah, they will work with you and try uh, to create a situation in your life where you can connect to your merciful side inshallah and still be responsible and perhaps inshallah uh, save your marriage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves for us uh, to be together and fight for his sake and looking after the institution of marriage. It is shaitan who is happy when spouses are fighting. It is shaitan who is extremely happy when spouses separate. May Allah protect our marriages and may Allah bless us with blessed spouses. My dear brothers and sisters, I love you all for the sake of Allah. Until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unites us again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.